Creatine. It's probably the most misunderstood supplement out there. Before we debunk the myths though, let's understand what it is and how it works. So creatine is a combination of three amino acids. Our body can make it or we can consume it. Most of it is red meat and fish. Once it's in our body, the majority of it goes to our muscle cells. Once within the cell, it can be phosphorylated to phosphocreatine. That's the exciting part because when you go to sprint like a 40 yard dash or run up some stairs, the first eight to 10 seconds, it's not aerobic, it's not anaerobic. It's your phosphocreatine energy system. Most people aren't aware of that. How does that work? Well, as I mentioned, when that creatine goes into the cell, it gets phosphorylated, so it has a phosphorus on it. Your ATP, which is our energy source, no matter how we go about anaerobic or aerobic, it's our energy source. We get energy by losing a phosphate. So we go from ATP, three phosphates, to ADP. In the phosphocreatine system, that regenerates that ADP back to ATP by donating its phosphorus group. So not only does it um, impact our ability to do strenuous exertion, it can help our workout. So that's one of the reasons that muscle grows. You can't just take creatine and, and get muscle strength, but if you do it combined resistance training, it's gonna allow more reps, better intensity, better quality of your workout, and will help with the muscle growth. Not only does it help with the muscle growth, it helps with maintaining muscle and keeping, keeping you from losing muscle, um, sarcopenia, which we don't want a loss of muscle. So one really neat study was they had young men volunteer to have a cast on their leg for two weeks. They used DEXA scans to track the muscle loss. And the group that had creatine had less, less muscle loss than the placebo group. They also were able to um, track the recovery of strength. And the group that had creatine recovered their strength back more quickly than the placebo group. Not only is it good for growing and maintaining muscle, it's also good to protect your muscle and avoid sarcopenia. Our brains. The phosphocreatine energy system is very useful in high demand situations and high demand tissue like our brain. An example can be a concussion. After a concussion, our creatine stores are depleted and part of the damage is due to an energy deficit in those cells. So there's a growing amount of people that are using creatine in their athletes after concussion to block from that secondary hit that can often happen one to two weeks after the original concussion. It's also been shown to improve cognitive abilities, especially in cases that are where someone's been strained. So, for instance, sleep deprivation. They had this study involved sleep depriving people and then checking their cognitive abilities using creatine or a placebo and the creatine group had better cognitive abilities. The myths. Let's start with bloating. A lot of people think that they take creatine, they're gonna bloat up and retain lots of fluid. Yes, when you creatine goes in a cell, it does increase the osmotic pressure of that muscle cell, so water is gonna flow into that cell, and it will be well hydrated, but in a healthy way. You're not gonna retain fluid in third space in, with fluid, subcutaneous fluid, like an unhealthy situation or someone who had heart disease. This is hydration of your muscle cell that is actually very good. Also, people often are worried about getting too much muscle. But you really would have to work quite hard at that to get too much muscle. You're not gonna turn into a bodybuilder by taking three to five grams of creatine a day. Kidneys. So some people think that creatine can harm our kidneys. It's probably been studied more than any other sports supplement out there. And I'm not aware of any good evidence that relates a young, healthy person taking three to five grams a day and any candy damage. 
as with any sports supplement, I recommend you run it past your healthcare provider, make sure it makes sense. And if your healthcare provider is tracking your creatinine levels and is concerned about them being elevated, it's a good idea to stop the creatine supplements for two weeks so you don't get an artificially high creatinine level. When I was younger, creatine was mostly for the bodybuilders and weightlifters, and they would do massive boluses. So they take a just an absolutely large amount of creatine. The studies have shown that most of us are gonna get the optimal benefits by just taking three to five grams maintenance dose. And so that's what I do. There is no biomarker for creatine, unlike some of the other supplements that are out there. Bottom line, creatine is not just for athletes, it's for anyone who wants to grow and maintain muscle, to avoid sarcopenia, and to optimize brain health. Remember, creatine increases the cellular energy by regenerating your ATPs. And that phosphocreatine energy system is ideal in high demand situations, whether it's brain or muscle. So if you're looking for a safe way to optimize your performance, consider creatine. Thank you.